For the next 48 hours, I am taking every single Uber ride that I get. In an effort to figure out how Uber treats their riders who take every single ride that's thrown at them, and to answer the question, is taking every Uber ride worth it in 2024? The schedule is simple. I am going to be driving what Uber considers the most premium hours to drive where they will reward the most points for their Uber Pro uh, rewards programs like Uber Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. They have different hours for what type of day of the week it is. So for the regular weekdays, Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. are the hours we're going for because we are doing Monday and Tuesday. And in order to hit some of my goals, I have a mountain to climb with the schedule, but we'll talk about that later. But in order to get to some of those higher tier programs, it shouldn't be too hard if I'm taking every single order, right? Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Kenny for brand new, pronounced Key In. And today, oh boy, we have got a day ahead of us. We are taking every single Uber ride as we work today. So I've already laid it out. 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. We are in the morning shift right now, and then I'm gonna go back home, take a little break. I actually have another meeting to deal with, and I'm hoping to God that it goes well, but at, the get, at, at this point, I'm at the mercy of Uber. But yeah, actually, let me show you something real quick. So I have technically, quote unquote, started already. Um, I actually don't have Uber X on, so I don't consider the challenge actually started by any means. Um, but what's also cool is I have a little bit of surge and there's actually some surge going on in this area, which probably means it's very busy, which means the first ride I'm gonna get, it's probably not gonna be the greatest, but only one way to find out. And I guess this is the first ride we're doing this morning. Uh, it's $11.42 for literally a seven minute ride. That's what we love to see. I'm gonna let this customer know that I'm on my way. Let's go get the first ride of the day done. But if you thought this was going to be a problem-free series, you are in it for the long ride, just as quite literally I was. When my second ride, my passenger canceled the ride whilst she was in the car with me as I was on my way to take her to her drop-off. Now, I will never understand what actually happened here or why, but it basically required me to cancel another ride that Uber had given me and I fat fingered and took. And if she was trying to scam me just to get a free ride, well, um, it didn't work. She lost the money for the ride and I know because I got half of it. Like, just why? Why? Why, do you, why would you do that to me in my car? Because I, I took her right back. I. I told her I cannot take this ride for you. This wasn't even the thing where it was like, you know what, if you just Venmo or cash at me the money or something, then I'll take the ride uh, for the difference. Because like, I need to get the points, like I need to keep moving. If you have a ride like this where you pick up a passenger and they cancel the ride whilst you're in the car with them, under no circumstances do you take them to that drop-off point that was set because there are a lot of issues here. One, obviously there's the assumption that you're just gonna give them a free ride, which obviously doesn't work for you. But on top of that, if there is any issue throughout the ride and you drop them off to whatever that drop-off point was without returning them to the starting point when the ride was canceled, that could be considered kidnapping as you took them without any consent of the ride after it was canceled. And you could get in a lot of legal trouble for that. Now, I've never heard of a scenario of somebody actually getting deactivated or arrested for kidnapping when the rider just canceled to try to get a free buck, but you don't want to be the first. Oh, in case that wasn't enough, don't worry. We're going to keep going for just this morning shift because another passenger left his phone in my car. And unfortunately, I can't call him to tell him that his phone is in my car because his phone is in my car. This was an absolute headache to deal with as I had to go through multiple lines of customer support just to rearrange a drop off with the guy to try to figure out how to actually get the phone back to him without calling him, obviously. And whilst Uber did give me a $20 reimbursement for actually getting the item back to the passenger, I would have preferred not dealing with it at all. But struggles aside, taking every single ride this morning turned out to be very, very profitable. Not including the $20 phone return money, we ended up making $85.78 in two hours. 
The surge was massive to help me through a lot of the issues I was going through in the morning, and the demand keeping me busy was very welcome. But what is a challenge without a goal? Well, I have three goals that I'm trying to hit throughout this challenge. Number one, obviously we want to make some money here. I'm trying to make $500 in just two days of driving. And when I say make, I mean I want to net $500. It's not just making the money. I want that money to be able to go into my pocket when everything is said and done. I'm also trying to hit 101 Uber points because I'm currently at 199 Uber points and I would like to have enough points to at least hit Uber gold once this challenge is done which once I looked at the statistics is going to require about at least 20 rides every day. Not to mention, I'm going to have to be taking a ton of rides throughout the rest of this week if I do want to hit even just Uber Gold because my acceptance rate is only at 44% starting this challenge and my completion rate is actually too high at 7% when it needs to be down to 4%. And my acceptance rate? It needs to be at 85%. So I need to boost my acceptance rate by 41%. I need to decrease my cancellation rate by 3%, which should be much easier, hopefully. And this ties in with 101 points I'm trying to hit for at least Uber Gold. And I'm saying Uber Gold because I just don't realistically think I'm going to make Uber Platinum by the end of the month. All right, everybody, we're back out. It is 11.27 a.m. This has actually nothing to do with the challenge. I just have a $75 reservation, um, and I have to get a, a move on because it's like 34 minutes away. So... My $75 reservation was an absolute breeze, and after that, I got another $30 ride to Central Philly, which I didn't love, but hey, it's money is money. Alrighty, y'all, update. Phone has been returned, car is charged, car is washed and cleaned inside and out, and I've got some food in me, so we are ready to go back online. I decided that it made more sense during this period of time that I wasn't actually intending to work to charge up, eat, uh, grab a car wash real quick get back down to Delaware and Wilmington where I have been working the majority of this challenge and get back for the real shift of the day uh, well I have officially gotten the worst ride of the day so far uh, let's see that's an hour-long ride $32 uh, I mean, statistically, it's not the worst, but I don't want to be here. Uh, I have to drive all the way back down. I knew that this was going to be one of the defining moments of the challenge, and I had an opportunity to take after the rider didn't show up within the two minute window because this was an UberX share ride. And it wasn't an easy decision to make, but I did something that I'm not really proud of. I feel terrible. I just did probably the most an immoral thing I've done in a, in a minute, um, I canceled. Um, now, I didn't cancel in the sense of lowering my completion rate. Uh, it, it gives you, it was an UberX share and she didn't get there on time because she has like a two minute timer. So I, like, I had every right to cancel in a weird way, but I feel terrible for it. But it, it saves me from going an hour away into Philly which I also really don't want to do. So, and I'm sure somebody else will pick her up. Like, I didn't charge her a cancellation fee. I did not charge her a cancellation fee. I'm not too mad at myself, but I do, I do feel a little bad. And whilst I felt terrible about the decision I made, it was easily the best decision I had made in this entire challenge. You know what? I don't feel as bad for unassigning that ride because look at what I just got. Yes, it's going to take a while. Essentially, by the time I'm finished with that, it'll be the same amount of time, but I won't be in West Philly. I'll just be at the airport. And it's a $78 Premier ride. Oh. Sometimes things are just meant to happen for a reason. The day was wrapping up quickly and I only had one more hill to conquer and it's quite a difficult one, especially for somebody with ADHD, which is waiting. Is dork. I'm really tired. Um, it's 6.40. I've got another 20 minutes until the uh, three point boost ends. So I've got 20 minutes to get another ride. It's actually been pretty slow. I've been waiting for like 15 minutes for a ride. Surprisingly slow. I think more than anything, I'm just bored. I did take my ADHD meds, don't worry. 
I'm still bored. All right, I got it. Final ride of the night. It's actually an Uber comfort ride, so hell yeah. Um, let's go get this done. This is literally like right down the road and then right down even a little bit further and then we're done. That's gonna be the last ride for the night. I finished up the final ride with just five minutes short of 7 p.m. and that was what concluded day one. I'll reveal how much I made at the end of the video, so stick around to the end to see how much money, or lack thereof, I made throughout this challenge. But before we go into day two, let's talk about why I'm actually doing this challenge. Because I'm sure a lot of you are asking, Kian, if you have to get an 85% acceptance rate and you have to essentially take everything to get there, why even bother doing it? I've talked about in previous videos about why I don't think acceptance rate matters for a majority of the gig apps out there, and this, in my opinion, is the one exception to the rule. You see, Uber offers a lot of much, much better benefits and perks in their rewards programs. They get better as you go through Uber Gold, Uber Platinum, and Uber Diamond. So there are three reasons as to why I'm actually doing this challenge, and two of them are kind of connected with each other. The first reason as to why I'm doing this is... I need money. <laughs> hey, January has been a slow month, and it is arguably the slowest month of the entire year because everybody's kind of broke and they don't have a lot of disposable income to actually buy food and rides and transportation. But going to my two conjoined reasons, I really want to hit Uber Gold slash Uber Platinum at some point, specifically Uber Platinum, because that is where the higher priority customer support comes in. Now, I've had Uber Platinum before, and let me tell you, that support is so much better than the baseline Uber driver customer support. It is miles upon miles upon miles better than the baseline customer support. And there are a ton of other perks that I have that might be market dependent. I'm not entirely sure. And I know some people have different requirements as to what you actually need to hit Uber Gold and Platinum and Diamond, like different acceptance rates and cancellation rates and points. For me, this is what I have. In fact, one feature I will really try to take advantage of in the later years, uh, or in the later months, I guess, who knows, is Uber's gold perk where you can get a four-year undergraduate to Arizona State University online, I guess entirely for free? I don't know exactly how it works and I don't know how the distribution process has went, but if that is true, that is spectacular because your boy did not go to college. <laughs> but there's another reason as to why I want to hit at least Uber Gold, but preferably Uber Platinum and maybe even Uber Diamond someday. And this is more of a rumor and a thing I've heard around, but I have heard that when you get to the higher tiers of Uber Pro, you actually get much better priority on things like reservations. And if you guys don't know, I'm an Uber Premier driver alongside being just a regular Uber X driver. So for this challenge, you'll probably see I'm getting a lot of different rides from Uber X, Uber Comfort Electric, Uber Comfort, and Uber Premier. Premier is the highest paying option that I have because I drive a Tesla Model 3, which is considered a luxury vehicle in my market of Philadelphia. And I don't get Premier reservations often. In fact, they're very much a dime a dozen. But I've heard that the higher your Uber Pro status is, the higher priority and like easier priority you have to getting these reservations and to getting better bonuses and offers from Uber. Now, this is a rumor. I don't know the actual validity of this. If any of you do, obviously leave a comment down below. And if you've made it this far in the video, also make sure you leave a like on the video. It really helps me. It helps the algorithm tell people, hey, this is a great video. Come watch it. And I would really appreciate it. But yeah, those are my three reasons. Money, Uber Pro, Gold, Platinum, and on top of that, maybe getting more reservations and bonuses from Premiere. Who knows? Okay, anyways, back to the video. Good morning, everybody. It is 6.51 a.m. and unintentionally, I'm starting my day once again a little bit early. Got this Premiere ride right here. And like I said, I usually, like the second I'm awake, I turn on Uber with just Uber Premiere. Uh, and that's what I did this morning. And as it coming up, I got a premiere ride, 16 minutes, $14. Let's get started, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I think I've also found a little bit of a trick when it comes to taking every single ride. So Uber has this thing called destination filters, which I'm currently using. Um, and I'm using, as you can see, I have a two minute destination filter. This is literally just down to like the community college place, whatever. 
uh, from where I currently am. So I am just waiting here and I'm going to wait to get rides. And the difference with this is Uber has to do one of two things. It either has to send me a ride with uh, my location here at being like towards my destination, which if I'm far enough away from the destination, um, they will. But as you can see, I'm two minutes away. They're not gonna send me anything for instant offers, but they will send me trip radars of uh, trips that are outside of my delivery preferences. Or sorry, uh, out of my destination filter preferences. So they'll send me other trips. So this way I can actually be selective because if I don't take a trip radar, I don't like my acceptance rate, it, my acceptance rate doesn't drop, but it will go up if I take the ride. Yeah, that did not work for me. All right, everyone, the morning shift is done. It is actually 9.18 a.m. I had to go grab some uh, groceries. So the second I was done with that uh, last ride, um, I went to go grab that. Uh, six trips this morning, $64.51 in just a little over two hours. Not bad whatsoever. I mean, that's, I mean, just shy. I actually might be $30 an hour pace. Um, and for a slow morning with almost no surge whatsoever and a couple of eh rides, not too bad. So um, I'm gonna get home, shower up, clean up, um, and probably about like 1.30 I'm gonna leave uh, and we are going to get ready for our final five hours of taking every single Uber offer and we'll see what we can do. Besides that, days whose morning shift was uh, not as exciting but not exciting actually in a good way. I got six rides done, which was on track for my daily goal, and I actually got to take a break in between the day from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., whereas day one, I had kind of just been all over the place and only had like, a, like one hour to breathe. But day two struggles weren't the rides themselves. I mean, yeah, I didn't get some, uh, did get some icky ones. It was the lack of rides I was being sent. My ADHD was really being tested this day because I was just waiting and waiting and waiting in 15 to 20 minute intervals, just trying to get anything. And mind you, I was in the go-to spot in my city of Wilmington. I get that today was Tuesday and it truly felt like a Tuesday and I couldn't do this challenge on Wednesday or Thursday because of the weather. It was just very stressful overall. After a handful of rides, I got hungry and stopped for a quick snack and that presented my next problem. Okay, forgive me for the weird angle, but my other phone just died. As you can see, I'm at McDonald's here, and I just spent, I think, 15 minutes waiting for my very complicated McDonald's order, which is a plain McChicken and a medium fry. 15 minutes for that. I used to work in food service, okay? I get it. But that is outrageous. Not to mention, Whilst I was, I, I had ordered it through uh, the app, I, I did a mobile order. Um, I ordered it through the app because it had been relatively slow. I had waited for like five minutes. Um, so I, you know, I turned off UberX. I had Comfort Electric and Premier on thinking, I'm not gonna get another ride. Then I get this. I, I was waiting at McDonald's. I said, you know, I'm just making a quick pickup because I thought it was gonna be ready. I thought it was gonna be ready like that. 15 minutes later, I finally get my food. Um, the customer had already unassigned at this point, uh, and I'm so sorry. If you're that customer, I'm so sorry for making you wait. I really am. I feel like an asshole for that. That's my scenario today. McDonald's, you need to staff more people in this McDonald's specifically, and you let me down. After my McDonald's fiasco, I got another ride before getting another trip to the airport, although I'll be paying like half the price, which shortened my time even more as the challenge clock was winding down. By the time the airport ride was done, I had just about an hour and a half left to try and get another seven rides done for my 20 ride daily goal. I knew that this was possible if Uber just gave me enough rides to work with, but that was my final ride. The demand was entirely non-existent. I only ended up getting two more rides and by 6.15, that meant I had 45 minutes to get five more rides. And unfortunately, that 45 minutes was spent in vain because I did not get a single ride offer for the rest of the night. Okay, well, I, I got this one, but someone else got to it before me. So the challenge ended on a whimper instead of a bang, but at the end of the day, the goals are what we care about, so let's talk about what we were able to accomplish. 
On day one, I gotta be honest, I really popped off on day one. And obviously I had the $75 reservation to be excited about. And I just had some really good rides on day one, all things said. But even without those, I think it was still an amazing day because I grossed $376 on the first day in just 7.8 hours of work. Day two wasn't as exciting, but it was still pretty good, all things considered, especially for a Tuesday. I grossed $168, only had $3 in expenses, which was the McDonald's, uh, so I net $165 from that. I worked 6.5 hours, drove 121 miles with the mileage deduction of $81, netting me an hourly rate of $25.50 per hour. So, overall, over 14 and a half hours worked, I grossed $547 for the challenge, but that does not mean I got the $500 goal because you have to take out expenses. But thankfully, because I drive a Tesla, my expenses were relatively low, and I was able to net $508. First goal accomplished. We, made, we were able to net $500 throughout the challenge. Overall, I drove 323 miles with a total mileage deduction for taxes, for tax reasons, obviously consult a tax expert on your basis, but I was able to get an estimate of $216 from a mileage deduction, which puts me at a net of $35.50 per hour over this two-day challenge. Now, something I should keep in mind here is I did not set any of this $500 set aside for taxes. I have a different way of doing taxes and saving for taxes. I do save for taxes, don't worry. I just have a different way of doing it than everybody else does. I just put a set amount aside every month going into a tax savings account, which just goes into like a high interest yield savings account. I am not a tax expert. Contact your CPAs and tax professionals on your own accord. Do not listen to me for tax advice, please. Okay, so as for the amount of rides taken, like I said, I did fall quite short on both days specifically. I only managed 29 rides in the two days, whereas the goal was to shoot for 20 rides each day, so I averaged about 15 rides a day. In reality, I couldn't control much of that because, again, I was taking whatever Uber was sending me, and things could have admittedly been much better, but considering the two rides that I had to Philly that both ended up getting cancelled, they also could have been significantly worse. I also fell just like barely short of my uber gold dreams and aspirations by like 18 points, but to be honest, seeing where my acceptance rate is at now after taking 29 straight rides like that, I'm not hitting uber gold. <laughs> so for that, I'm just gonna have to shoot for that gold specifically over the next three month period, aka February 1st to April 30th, 31st, something like that, where I am going to continue taking every single ride just for Uber Premier and Uber Comfort Electric exclusively. So overall, is taking every single Uber ride worth it? Probably not. Understand a lot of my income comes from reservations, Premier rides, non Uber X options that I get in the app. And on top of that, I also get an extra $1 per ride for my EV bonus for having a Tesla Model 3. If you have all of these benefits going for you or even more benefits like SUV options, then it may be worth taking every single ride in your market as well as if you have Lyft on top of that and might be a reasonable option to try taking every single ride but that's still putting whatever rides that Uber wants to send to you directly into their hands and not yours. So very much market dependent and also vehicle dependent if it's gonna be worth it for you and your market going into 2024. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I have put so much work in this video and in this entire challenge and series. I know it probably looked very li linear and simple, but it was so much mental fortitude to try to get this challenge done. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you are subscribed, become a member of the cool kids today because I have been like brainstorming so many awesome ideas just like this one. And I'm going to be pumping out the content in the coming weeks. And I would really appreciate your support along the way. And if you want to see more awesome videos on the YouTube channel, not only about Uber, but about other gig apps, you can check these other videos that are going to be up on the YouTube channel in the outro. And with all that said and done, I hope you guys enjoyed and stay cool.